My name is Amata, and in this Red Gaming Tech video, I am here with the latest in the gaming world. So, what do I have for you today? Well, unfortunately, for those of you playing Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, which is apparently everyone ever, the latest anti cheat update is causing a bunch of issues. Now, you might have also heard about the rather infamous sizzle reel, out of context sizzle reel, that was shown at the White House meeting between, of course, the current president and various video game representatives, and Warren Spector has made some comments on it that I'd kind of want to dig into and give my opinion on. And finally, we have an unfortunate delay for the PS4 exclusive Days Gone. So let's begin with PUBG. So for those of you who play the game, you probably noticed that on Thursday there was an anti-cheat update. Unfortunately, this brought with it a host of issues, including the anti-cheat update randomly banning innocent players. Unfortunately, it doesn't stop there, as apparently there's various conflicts between the anti-cheat measures and the programs that might be running in the background on your PC. Unfortunately, there's no reliable way to fix it. However, I do have a few statements from the developer Bluehole from the game's forums. And they said, quote, We released a patch yesterday without going through any maintenance to add some new anti-cheat features. However, we know that some players are having compatibility issues causing the game to crash or unable to launch the game. We are doing our best to resolve this issue. With the issue that is related to the game not launching, we are checking for any conflict between anti-cheat solutions and other programs. Now they did also helpfully provide a list of instructions which you should try if you're having these issues or of course link that in the description below as well. But unfortunately they did say that they will not be pulling this update. So basically you'd have to kind of make do, try and find a way around it or wait for the following update which will hopefully iron out the kinks. Now as widespread as the banning is and all that the frame rate issues seem to be way way more widespread as there is a reddit thread filled with players basically saying that the game is pretty much unplayable and apparently according to some developers at blue all who responded to the thread this was even affecting some developers as well and they said, quotes, Some of us in the office have experienced the same problems ourselves, and after some troubleshooting, we've determined that various programs are interfering with our anti-cheat solution. And there's a lot of tweaking we need to do on our end to fix that. So, basically, you just kind of have to like it and lump it at, the, at this point while they figure out exactly what's going on and how to fix it. At the moment, all you can do, unfortunately, is try the tweaks that they have suggested. If you are having the frame rate stuttering issues, they have suggested systematically closing down background applications and then relaunching the game, which obviously is a long and arduous process and not all that brilliant. So... Unless you're particularly attached to playing this game right now, it might be best just to wait if you're having these issues, but of course, you are more than free to give these tweaks a try and see if it fixes your issue. So as I said, there's going to be the link to the instructions from Bluehole as well as the Reddit thread. So moving on from that to something more of a sticky topic. Now you've undoubtedly seen that unfortunately the 90s is apparently back and video games are being blamed for violence once more. And you might also know that the current president and of course a few other people in the White House met with various representatives from various companies within the video game industry and unfortunately there was an out of context scissor rail of some various violent scenes from video games which is really you know, not that helpful to this conversation at all. Now, there were some interesting comments made on Twitter from the Deus Ex director Warren Spector. I want to go through what he said and basically why I disagree with what he said. And obviously, this is my opinion, so do take that from for what it's worth. Just want to say I'm not going to get into the whole violence in video games, you know, and all that discussion in this video. It's not really the place, but I will discuss what Warren touches on. So what does he have to say? He says, quote, I don't believe video games cause violent behaviour, not for one second. However, the video game reel shown at the White House on Thursday is simply disgusting. Every shot is in colossally bad taste and everyone associated with those games should be ashamed of themselves. They hurt us. Just to be clear, I don't mind violence in games. The glorification of violence I mind a little. What I mind a lot is gratuitous, over-the-top depictions of violence. And to repeat, it's not that games cause behaviour, it's just bad taste and the damage it does to us with haters. So as you might expect, this comment was rather controversial and I definitely disagree with it. Because while 
context is a thing, and also no one's saying this is about films or TV, so why is video games being treated any different? I want to go through a couple of responses from a couple of developers to kind of expand my thoughts on why I disagree with this. So we got a comment first from one Lindsey Graham who worked on Sniper Elite Nazi Zombie Army 2 and they said quote I was one of the designers on Sniper Elite and I'm actually rather proud of it rather than ashamed I have to admit though whilst the bullet can made me giggle in NZA actually made me feel uncomfortable in Sniper Elite but I think that's okay there's a lot of stuff I felt uncomfortable watching some of the stuff from The Walking Dead goes a bit overboard for me but I don't think it hurts TV as a whole or that the cast and crew should be ashamed now we also have a comment from the Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford. Now think of him what you will, a lot of people think quite poorly of him and for good reason. He does have a very good point here and he says, quote, your own games can be cut with such a mindset, pressed into the same service of highlighting depictions of violence to undermine art and expression. Such depictions are sometimes necessary if art is going to be useful to our species. Have you not read Shakespeare, the Bible? And again, think of him what you will. He has a point, and I, dis I do agree with him there, because I've made this argument before, in a separate context, but still I have made this argument before, that I do not see why games cannot be allowed to touch on topics and cover topics in stories or characters or whatever that might make you feel uncomfortable, that are perhaps on the more violent end of the spectrum, or just dealing with difficult topics like, you know, perhaps mental illness or other such things. There's no reason why video games cannot do that when films can. You know, video games can absolutely be art, and again, for something to be art, sometimes it has to make you feel uncomfortable, to make you perhaps think of things in a way that you might not want to, that's outside of your comfort zone, that sort of thing. That is what good art does, in my opinion. And even if it's just like, hey, that was really good, and a video game was fun, that's also cool. You know, A video game doesn't have to be art to be good, but it can absolutely be art. Some of you may have seen a rather snarky tweet from myself, where I joked about creating a out of context sizzle reel from violent scenes in films and it would have started with a rather infamous scene from a French film by the name of Irreversible. I'm not going to show it in this video but go check it out if you've got the stomach for it and you can kind of see what I mean like there's no reason why video games shouldn't be able to do the same sort of thing that films have been doing for years so I will just say I really disagree with what Warren Inspector is saying. I don't think anyone involved with those games should be ashamed. Context is a thing. Yeah contactless violence okay yeah I think fair enough but Pretty much every game has some sort of context, even if it's just like, hey, these guys are demons, let's go kill the demons. That, that That's cool, that's fine, that's all the context you need, you know, that's all Doom is really at the end of the day. So that's just pretty much what I think of that. And it kind of ties into our next topic. Now this is going to be a snippet from a rather lengthy article that I might do a whole video on because I feel like this is a whole video in itself which is why I don't really want to discuss the whole violence in video games and the fact that you know I don't think it correlates to real world violence and all that sort of thing. So again I'm not going to go into that really into this video but I do think this is interesting as of course this has come up again because apparently it's the 90s again. But there was a paper called Violent Video Games and Real World Violence Rhetoric versus Data, which was centred on video games and violence by a psychologist by the name of Patrick Markey. And they reported something rather interesting, and that it was not only was there a lack of evidence basically saying that games con contributed to acts of violence, but the major releases of violent video games actually coincided with a decrease in these types of crimes. I'm going to read you a bit of a quote here. It says, Contrary to the claims that violent video games are linked to aggressive assaults and homicides, no evidence was found to suggest that this medium was a major or minor contributing case of violence in the United States. Annual trends in video game sales for the past 33 years were unrelated to violent crime, but concurrently and up to four years later. Unexpectedly, monthly sales of video games were related to concurrent decreases in aggravated assaults and were unrelated to homicides. Searches for violent video game walkthroughs and guides were also related to decreases in aggravated assaults and homicides two months later. Finally, homicides t tended to decrease in the months for the following the release of popular M-rated violent video games. Now, this does actually tie into a more recent report from Dr. Markey, which basically expands upon the same thing. And again, I don't want to talk too much on this in this video, as I do feel like it was worth its own video. But it does continue to show that games has sorry, violence has decreased as games have become more popular. Times when people are playing games, violence does decrease, and school shooters play games three times less than your average student so basically your average school shooter is not playing call of duty on the weekend 
So just something rather interesting to chew on as we move on to our final topic regarding Days Gone. Now this game was of course the highlight of E3, the year it was revealed, and while I'm sure a lot of us are sick of zombie games, I was interested because these zombies looked different and more like the ones that we saw in World War Z, which definitely got me intrigued, and of course the setting and the main character as well also got my intrigue meter going as well, but unfortunately... The game has been significantly delayed. Now, we didn't actually have an official release date, but it was expected to release sometime in 2018. But unfortunately, it's been pushed back to 2019 at some point. Now, Sony have confirmed that this is the case, but they unfortunately didn't give any details or explanation. It's just, it's coming out in 2019 now. Now, again, it never was set for, like, say, just for example, October of 2018 but it was set for 2018 and now it's just some vague point in 2019 so apparently they've hit a pretty major roadblock or they just want to make sure that everything's right before releasing this or it could be a mixture of both either way a bit of a shame but not exactly anything to cry tears over i would again rather wait and make sure that this game is as good as it can be i think we've all had our fill of developers rushing games and then getting a broken buggy mess upon release so, that's me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching and for your support. It really does mean a great deal to us both. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.